That looks bright, yeah, from this way. Looks good. Yeah, it looks good, I think. Yeah. Hope we don't get demonetized from all the booze. Hi, guys. You gonna say hi? <laughs> <laughs> hi, guys. It might look like we're sat drinking, we're not. Uh, we're just sat in the corner of our school. Um, we're about to film a bit of a kind of tutorial, aren't we? Yeah. Um, today we're going to focus on Babs, who's competing in Novice, who's got the area festivals in a week's time, a week yep. and a few days. A week, week a week, today. week today. Yeah, so um, do you want to tell us a bit about Babs and, and your journey with her so far? Yeah, so um, obviously we showed you Raisin the other day, who is my other ride. She's a six-year-old mare also. Um, so Babs and Raisin, I'm competing them at the same level at Novice. Um, but they're two very different horses. So Babs for me is where the journey started. She's my first horse. Um, she's the reason why I got into dressage. I bought her as a four-year-old, very green four-year-old, um, when I lived up north. And um, fast forward to, I then met Henry and you've pretty much trained us from a very green rider and a very green horse to where we are now. Um, she isn't necessarily a dressage bred horse. Um, she was more for, I think, meant for showing, um, but she's got the most gorgeous temperament. And for me, she was the perfect horse to jump from riding ponies as a child to then not riding all for 15 years to now being 28 years old and wanting to get into dressage. So she's the perfect temperament, isn't she? Like you couldn't yeah. ask for a more perfect horse to start the journey with. Um, and so, yeah, she's um, really sweet and she has her difficulties in that, um, I don't know how to explain this. Well, I, I suppose she's, she is beautifully put together. She's got great confirmation, but she's yeah. she's not kind of your she's not a typical dressage horse. So she and she doesn't have huge elastic paces. She just has three very nice correct paces. Oh no! What's happened? It's gone grey. <gasps> How the hell has that happened? <laughs> Say hi, Annie. Hmm? Is Say that hi. that chicken that's got caught in the washing machine? It must have done. That's really sad. Hmm, it's my favourite number. When's your birthday? See, <laughs> 6 of September. <laughs> oh, that's all right. <laughs> that's what you got to buy her. I thought you were going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, put her in the other one then. Yeah. 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 No, I didn't see that. I put it on her and I went to the girl. Show the camera. Don't buy Kentucky numbers. <laughs> this is what happens, apparently. You spend a fortune and it rips after the fifth wash. <laughs> Sassy. <laughs> no, I was going in. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so she's not the biggest mover. She doesn't. Um, she's. Well, she's, uh, she's, well, she's very. Um, so she's got three correct paces. Yeah, she's a lovely, lovely put together model. Um, but she wouldn't be the most supple and elastic horse, would she? No, so you can, you know, you'll have like a few really good rides and then you'll feel it, you know, if she's worked hard, that her body, you know, she's stiff on one side or isn't supple. Yeah. Um, so then that obviously comes with its own challenges in the training. Um, but she's a gorgeous horse. She's, she's little miss like perfect, little miss consistent every time. Right, we're not having that in the video. <laughs> Get out. Take two. <laughs> so annoying. <laughs> Literally, as soon as we press record, okay, it's like so the whole world starts at once. Where did we... Um, yeah, so, tell, um, obviously we're going to do a uh, bit of a tutorial with Babs today. Babs is your horse, isn't she? Yeah. And um, she's competing at Novice at the Area Festivals. Do you want to tell us a little bit about um, Babs and like your journey so far? Yeah, so we're training at Novice um, and she is Little Miss Perfect, Little Miss Consistent. You know, every time you take her out to do a show, she knows her job, she does it really well. Um, but for me, 
the bit that I feel like I'm missing with her that I have with Raisin is with Babs you have to create her hotness. She's not a naturally hot horse and if you're not careful she could easily train me how to ride her and for her that ideal way is I'm not on her case about her being in front of my leg and she would just very much go around the arena in a really sweet way that's not necessarily um, the way that we would want her to go. Well I think that we're trying to develop the way she moves all the time yeah. to make her kind of um, move more impressively, more elastically and um, use her body because she's, she is almost perfect but she kind of yeah. trots around in a nice place but doesn't really use herself. She's quite economical and she, she does everything so perfectly. And yeah. she's, um, she's like the kind of horse, she has such a huge place in my heart because you can't, you can't take that for granted when you have a horse, especially with like Indy starting again, that, yeah. that kind of comes out and she's the same every day. She's really reliable. Um, and obviously we're measuring out how much we can push at any time to get her to move more because we don't want to take that away from her and we don't want her to feel like she's always under stress but yeah. obviously you know we, we I know that she has the capability to move more elastically and more supplely and, and more impressively so we kind of balance that out where we we kind of work on her suppleness and then try to add power incrementally so that yeah. the power that we get doesn't take the suppleness away that we've worked on developing doesn't yeah. it? Yeah and the thing is like you know when we do push her for a bit more she does really enjoy it yeah um, when she gets there and discovers like you know like oh my legs can do this she's a real show-off she's isn't a she? real yeah. show-off but the it's just you know you have to go into each session and be mindful that if I'm not on, on it as a rider, she would very much just go around really sweetly around the school, um, which then in itself creates its own problems, doesn't it? Because if I just got on and, you know, just rode a really nice ride every day, mm -hmm. by the end of the week, she's stiff because she's given me a really good false feeling of that this is going really nicely. The less she uses herself, yeah. the less she can use herself. And also there's another side to it that actually if you don't get her in front of your leg in the training, when we go to a show, Babs is, she's, she is almost perfect still, but when she goes to a show, she hasn't been competing for long. No. And she can get a little bit shell-shocked. And what happens is everything that you feel at home is accentuated. So yeah. she's a little bit behind your leg at home. When she goes into the ring and she gets a bit nervous from her surroundings, she's she gets really way behind. more behind the leg. Yeah. And so you're, you're having to kind of really carry her around yeah. And obviously in training, if, we, if you get her way more in front of your leg, when she gets nervous, she will still respond to the leg. Okay, it might not yeah. be as sensitively as it is at home, but yeah, that's kind of what we have to work on. That You don't just have a sweet ride at home, you have her really reactive and relaxed and in front of the leg at the same time, because you need both of those things together. Yeah, someone actually um, commented, didn't they, saying that um, they're struggling with their horse. Um, basically doing the same thing that like the warm-up's really nice but then as soon as they go into the test yeah. it kind of all falls apart the horse gets nervous she gets nervous and it drops drops right, right behind her legs so she feels uh, like she has nothing yeah and it's the same with um, my horse you know like Henry said she's really new to competing and she will do the same thing go really sweet in the warm-up but then through the test I really have to ride every single stride otherwise I'm scared that she's gonna break and drop me um, so that's what we really want to work on in her training is just getting her a bit hotter um, and keeping her in front of my leg um, but then we also run the risk with Babs that uh, <laughs> sorry that's the dog uh, we also run the risk with Babs that we've had in past tests um, where she gets a bit too spicy and her canter transitions are always very eventful. Yeah, um, so it's finding, finding that finding right balance, line. isn't it? Yeah. And I think with all young horses, I think there's very rarely that you find a young horse that stays exactly the same when you go in the ring. Yeah. And, you know, they can either go, like Babs does, uh, down with her energy levels and, you know, almost hide in herself a little bit, or yeah. you've got other young horses that can go overreactive um, and I suppose what we'll talk about a little bit more as we go on is how we deal with either of those scenarios and there's obviously you know the better she understands her training yeah the easier it is to deal with but yeah. also there's there's lots of things that you can do in the run-up to the show you know before the show even to help that situation you know if you take them out 
you know, more regularly, compete more regularly, yeah. then they obviously get more comfortable with it. Yeah. And for different horses, that there's different ways to unlocking their relaxation at a show, and it can be a, a slightly longer, less intense warm up, or for some horses, it could be a shorter, more more intense warm up. And it just depends on your horse, and I think that's the biggest thing. They are all completely individuals, yeah. aren't they? So what works for Babs might not necessarily work for your horse, but I suppose. The point is that you, you just have to keep going out and find out what does work and obviously you might take some elements of what we do with Babs or yeah. what we do with Raisin and you know mix the two together and hopefully find the secret sauce that kind of brings out the best in your horse. Yeah, yeah. so we hope you like this training video. Henry's going to um, train me. We've actually got mics on today so hopefully you can hear both of us yeah. giving our input um, and yeah we hope you like it. Hope you enjoy the video. Just um, drop us a comment down below if you have any questions about anything we've talked about or um, any feedback really, like anything that you want to see, just let us know. Okay, so this is Babs. Hi um, Babs. SBS American Dream. SBS she's, American Dream. She's my six year old mare. Um, like I said before, I've had her since a four year old um, training novice. Um, this is usually the part of the session where she looks so uninterested until you wake her up. <laughs> um, here we go. Good girl. Um, yeah. What do you think, what, what do you feel like you need to work on from the novice for your areas? Is there any, any part of the test that you're kind of... Um, the medium trot, because we're, we're only just getting it at home. And like we say, you know, you go into a test and you lose about 20, did you usually say 20%? Yeah, you always, you always lose a good portion of what you can do at home. Um, I think, like again, it's a really relatable problem that p people have when they first start competing in novice as well. Um, it's the first time that you're asked to show any medium trot strides or medium canter strides, which is the lengthening of the stride. Um, and, and you see a lot of people making mistakes because they're trying to create a huge trot extension and actually you know even at novice level I think the important thing to remember is it's you're just showing our difference it doesn't have to be huge and it's also not for the full length of the diagonal so as long as you show a clear transition so from a, a smaller trot to a bigger trot back to a smaller trot um, you know you have to get a reasonable mark if everything is correct without a mistake yeah um, and obviously we want to find where the limit is and we, we push towards the limit without risking having a mistake, isn't it? And, yeah, and I think the risk always is you either don't get enough of a clear difference yeah. or you do and then your horse breaks. Yeah. And it's just, you know, finding the sweet spot in the middle of where you don't have a mistake, but then you're showing enough of a difference for them to be able to reward you. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So why don't you go and have a little warm up then? Yeah. And then we'll, um, I think we'll just take things as they come. Yeah. We'll, we'll see what we have to work with and then hopefully show you guys some useful tips to getting the best out of, uh, well, but getting the best out of Babs today, but maybe hopefully getting the best out of your horse at home as well. Yeah. Okay, so these guys are all warmed up now. Um, I think we, we're both feeling pretty happy with how she's warmed up. And we're going to take a little look at the training now. So I'll start teaching Indy a bit more. We'll just run through some basic exercises. Um, and yeah, just we'll see what comes up and, and what we need to do to make the improvements necessary for our show coming up shortly.
Okay, so I'm going to pop her into trot because she's yeah. getting distracted. Yeah. So I always think if, if she is getting a little bit distracted that you just come a little bit with your lower leg and give her the confidence by squeezing her with your legs rather than kind of holding her with your hands. Good girl. I'm actually going to move the camera down. To You'll have to bear with us guys because we're still trying to figure out figuring out where the best angles are. The lighting. And yeah, everything. the lighting's a bit tricky today. Okay. So just to start with. Again, we kind of stick to a, a similar formula, formula with all of the horses really in the beginning. So in the canter we'll just start using some transitions, a little bit of forward riding. Good. And as we're riding forwards, what we're looking to create is a horse that pulls the contact forward. So again, you kind of like maintain your contact out in front of you and push her to the bridle. Good. And whilst you're doing this forward riding as well, you know, with your horse, you're trying to get that free beat canter really nice and strong. So your rhythm has got enough spring and tempo into it that when you put a half halt in, there's sufficient energy in the hind legs that you can then generate a bit more towards a collection later on. Good, ride on the inside track. Check your straightness. Good, and a little bit forwards again. Good. So really important with the young horses that there's plenty of forward riding. Good. You know, so especially with a horse like Babs who thinks a little bit backwards sometimes. Really important that we get her, her mentality thinking the right way from the pressure. So when we squeeze with the legs, she goes again. Good. Well done. And then pop her on a circle and now start to think about making a transition back towards her hind legs. Important as a rider now that you start to ride positively forwards to the collection. So activating your seat. Good. Keep her on your outside rein, outside leg. Yeah. Good. And then ride a little forwards again. Now that's plenty of collection in your first attempt. So why do we do these transitions? We do them to make the horse reactive from the leg forwards and then also react back from the half halt. So whilst we develop, you know, we always read in the sheets we want more engagement. How do we get engagement? It's all about having energetic hind legs that then stay within good posture and that, that's basically just created from forward riding into half halts. Good. So the energy you create doesn't just get longer okay. and longer out the front door. That's good. This time you can do your 10 meter circle to help with your collection. I quite often find that riding that small circle helps you ride positively. So you can kind of ride more forwards into the collection rather than thinking back to it. Good. That's super. There she's really close. Now ride forwards again. And again, the biggest thing I think you need to remember when you're starting to introduce more collection is to not stay in it for too long. You don't want your horse to start thinking backwards. So when, when you feel like you've achieved a nice amount of strides, remember, ride forwards out positively again. That's nice and uphill. That looks really good. I love that balance. Good, now come large. Now check your straightness again. So on the next long side, ride on your quarter line. So we're always checking, we're going through our checklist. Is my horse straight? Is my horse reactive? Super. Okay, and then from the next corner, why not do a little bit of leg yield from the outside to the in? So you're bringing your outside leg on and you just gently push her over. That's it. Take the shoulders first. That's it. Move her and now go straight and pat her. That's plenty. Plenty. Again, we're not riding the leg yield to do a perfect test leg yield. Good we're job. checking that when I put our left leg on that the horse moves to the right. So again, come out. Pushing over. Super. Now ride straight and ride a little bit forwards. 
It sounds a bit of an alien concept, but actually to be really truly be able to ride your horse straight, you've got to be able to ride your horse laterally. So if your horse can move off your left leg and understands that when you put your left leg on, it moves to the right, and vice versa, when you put your right leg on, the horse moves to the left, then you can kind of ride the horse straight from your leg. So if the horse does fall in a particular di direction, you can actually correct it. That's super. Ride a little bit of forwards in again. Now impulsion. So it's a continuous game. It's riding with strategy and consistency to create a reactive and supple horse. <laughs> Cheeky. How does she feel? Really? Yeah. Great. Okay. And now I think we'll give her a little breather. Good. So are you happy with how she's feeling so far in the session? Yeah, really happy. I mean, sometimes you find that because um, we give our horses the weekend off, the first day back can be a bit like, you know, having to start all over again a bit. Um, but she feels really good. Um, we've only really been working on the collection um, properly, I'd say the past few sessions. And today it felt really positive. She was responding quicker to my seat. Cool. So just remember, you know, straight back on it, sorry. But the walk break is your perfect opportunity to train your walk. So just do a few free walks on the diagonal. You know, the most, it's a huge thing and so easy to forget, like when you give your horse a walk break just to like chill out and relax, but actually it's the perfect opportunity to try and make your walk, um, improve your walk. Every step counts. The walk is a double mark and especially at novice and the lower levels, that is a really, really big uh, chance to kind of maximize your score. If you can get a great mark for your walk, um, not only does it affect kind of, well, it's a double mark, so it, it brings in more points, obviously, but also your pace is marked as well. Um, so many people let their horses kind of slob around and just like chill out and then wonder why when they're getting a test, their walk has no impulsion. Okay, so we're gonna work a little bit on your trot next, yeah? Yes. Yeah, so she's done really nice canter work, we're dead happy with that. Um, there's always stuff to work on, but really happy with how she's taking the work and um, she looks like she's involved and, you know, trying her hardest, which is the most important thing, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and so in the trot, we're going to work on the mediums now, aren't we? Yeah, well, yeah. a bit De of everything. Develop developing towards those medium trots and I'll show you. It's not about finding a perfect medium trot with Babs, but it's just about getting her comfortable with changing gear in the trot. So we'll show you how we, we do that really progressively. To start with, it, the medium trots won't look like medium trot too much. It's more about just taking the gear change and getting her feeling positive and knowing that she's getting it right and hopefully then developing in some good medium steps. Yeah, so this is usually the part where we need to like hot on her up a bit so yeah. that she is thinking forward because um, she needs that to actually really help her. And once she's thinking forward in the trot, you can actually see a new trot come in and it is um, actually quite flashy for her. Um, but you just have to like dig deeper in her and find yeah. it, don't you? I, th I think as well, you know, the, the great thing about this, the process of working on it does make her hotter. Yeah. So, you know, uh, and like how we go about making her hotter, it's really simple. It's just making the transitions forward and backer, forward and backer, <laughs> forward and back more intensely. So you ask the questions quicker, which gets her thinking quicker and therefore makes her react better. Yeah. yeah. So let's go and do that now then. So we're just going to work a little bit towards the, the novice trot work that we've got to do at the area festivals. She's doing novice 23. Good. Right, so in Novice 23, the trot work's pretty simple actually. It's just um, 15 meter circles at A and C, um, and a little bit of medium trot, and obviously your trot canter transitions. So nothing too complicated, but obviously because of that, you've got to really show in the best quality possible what you want to do. So I have a little change of rein, just in this normal trot. So we're just establishing what I think is a nice working trot. Good. Active. Good girl. Good. So again, so we'll do that from A, your 15 metre circle. Better.
Well done. Ride up to V and then change the rein from V to M and we'll show a little bit of medium trot. Now this one is just about making a little transition. Nice and easy, doesn't have to be too flash. Yeah, good, and back. So, you know, the first time we do the medium trot like that in our training session is a confidence builder. We don't want to go for broke and then have a mistake. We want her to believe she's getting the uh, answer to the question that we're asking. She's getting it right to build her confidence. Line. Super. Really nice. That's a lovely 15 meter circle then. Good. Now we'll try a little bit of medium trot down the long side. Good. And now come back. Good. Now this time on the next long side, we're just going to go over a little bit extra. This time I don't mind if there's a tiny mistake. Obviously we're not encouraging her to make it, but we're going to push the limits. Yeah, that's good. Good. Pat the neck. Super. Tell her that she's great. Obviously we know that that's not a perfect medium trot, but for Babs, who struggles with medium trot, she's making a really good effort and there's a nice clear difference. Good. Good. And a transition back. And let her stretch a sec. Give her a long neck. Let her take the rein forward. Tell her how clever she is. Good girl. Good. Again, you know, it's being realistic at this point, isn't it, with her? Yeah, I mean, it's worth noting that um, obviously she does struggle with the medium trot and the compromise kind of is the softness in the frame Yeah. when I'm asking for it. But at that point, you know, it's because she finds it harder and rather than having a battle with her and um, because the frame is compromised, you know, it's just... It's not even it's not even a battle, is it? It's about going, okay, well, I know realistically at the minute she's not strong enough to yeah, do the medium trot and stay be. soft. So if she has to hold in her frame a little bit while she finds it, then yeah. we don't overcorrect her, basically. Exactly, yeah. yeah. That's what I was trying to say. So that's a really nice, pleasing working trot from her like that. Yeah. So they'll just do, on the next yeah. long side, maybe just let her travel because we've got a tractor coming. So we won't ask for the medium trot this time. Just aim to keep her focused with your leg, relaxed with your hands. Good. She's allowed to look, but she has to keep going. Good. Then pat yeah. her and tell her, yeah, distractions are a good thing. Well done, and a transition back. Good, and again then just reward her with a little stretch on the circle once, take the neck down and say, that was great. You know, so that there's a, always a clear reward when you feel like she's made a good effort. Super. And then you can pick her up maybe again and just try once more. Again, you don't need to go for any more, it's just about getting her comfortable with that level of exertion in it. Swing with your hips. Good girl. And transition back. Good girl. Make a big pat. Well done. Were you happy with that session? Yeah. Yeah. Really positive. Yeah. Um, she was a really good girl, wasn't she? Yeah. And it's just, you know, doing it incrementally rather than. Um, just pushing too hard to get it like you say you've got to build that confidence up yeah introduce it slowly you know it's not something that she finds easy and we want her to at the end of the day leave the session feeling confident and like she's done the right thing rather than like she hasn't been able to get it because she really thrives when she knows she's doing a good job um, and it's nice for the horses to just come away with it and have had a positive session and it's nice for us as riders as well, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And I, I think it's really important to remember as well, as much as we are, we are competitive, we want to do well, we want to win. 
But really, you know, the novice area festivals isn't the end goal. No. So we're not, we don't want to do anything that's going to knock her back in her training or her confidence just because we have a show coming. Yeah. So, we, you know, the end goal for me is always training every horse towards Grand Prix. Yeah. Uh, and like, you know, building her confidence, building her suppleness, her strength, all of those things. And, you know, at the minute, the cancer work is definitely her strong point. Yeah. But funnily enough, like six months ago, the trot was stronger than the canter. And it's just funny how these things change, change isn't yeah. it? But, um, you know, and you can see the beginnings of that medium trot. It's going to be really nice. And it's still good enough, I think, to get us a seven if we get it right on the day. Yeah. So for me, that's really good enough for now. Yeah. And just like you said, you know, the novice area festival isn't our end goal. So we're not pushing for that it's just something that we got there it's nice yeah. to do yeah and whatever happens on the day happens but for me the more Im most important thing is that our training at home keeps developing and is done in the correct way rather than rushed because of competitions and yeah so guys i hope you really enjoyed um our video today um if you want to ask any questions or anything like that about any of the training you've seen just drop us a comment down below um, please do like and subscribe our videos so that we know to keep making them yeah um, and the next training video is henry riding yeah for everyone that wants to see that no one wants to see they that do. we love to see you do no, it they need to see how <laughs> the professionals do it um so he's coming up next um and we're just busy 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 now until the areas and the nationals so probably have more training and horse content coming your way um but yeah so thumbs up if you liked the video or if you thought henry did a great job training me <laughs> or if you think babs is really cute give it a thumbs up and we'll see you next time see you guys bye we are rolling we are, we are testing rolling. We're testing, we're, we're testing, testing. <laughs> we're testing. Do the indie. I can't. <laughs> Do the Henry. <laughs> <laughs>